With the U.S. now considering airdropping aid to the Yazidis, I want to bring in Susan Johnson-Cook. She's the former U.S. ambassador at large for international religious freedom. We are hearing awful accounts about the persecution of minorities in Iraq. Uh, to start with the situation regarding the Yazidi community, those trapped in those mountains surrounding Sinjar, what are you hearing about the situation? You know, it is awful. It's been uh, deteriorating for quite some time. Just yesterday, the Yazidi community met with some of my NGO colleagues, and it's about a hundred of them came. There's a large population here in the United States, and many are settling in the area of Lincoln, Nebraska, but there certainly are about 40,000 who are trapped in the mountains there. And it's a very grave situation that's been happening for a long time. The only choices really have been stay and convert, die, or move up to the mountains. And so now they are trapped and it's a very grave very cruel situation and I what I've heard in terms of the US and the Department of Defense considering a humanitarian effort in terms of getting food there is really urgent because it will save hundreds and thousands of lives all right and that leads me to my next question about what the next move should be for the US uh, uh, laid out for me what should they be doing I met with some of the minority communities that were here in the states and you know it's partly a government responsibility but it's also a responsibility responsibility of those who come from those communities who can help. As I was ambassador, we couldn't go to Iraq, but I sat with the diaspora that was here. There's an immediate strategy that has to happen to save lives. And so dropping the food into the mountains and making sure they have food and water, the basic necessities of life, is an immediate, urgent strategy. In terms of long-range strategy, the U.S. Department of Defense and our president, I want to get ahead of them as well, will determine what is the best strategy that the U.S. can possibly make so that other lives will not be lost in this effort. So I, I will say that the U.S. government has been engaged and involved and they continue to do so. So I think you have to look at a two-pronged approach. One is mm -hmm. for the immediate needs and what is going to be the long-term strategy because so many minorities are oppressed there. The Christian community is eroding and going to other countries as well as the Yazidis as well as the minorities who are Muslims and not in the majority population. Yeah, I want to pick up on something you just said. You said it's not just about the U.S. government, it's also about those on the ground who can yes. help. Can we rely on authorities in Baghdad to do all they can to help these religious minorities? Well, you know, I mean, you have to really ask those sources there. I know that here in, in the U.S., like the Chaldean community and others who are concerned about the Christian community that are voting, have set up really social services, and they help everyone from the time that they arrive in the U.S. to finding housing, to finding food, and they very much are a community that receives. I think their neighboring communities are going to have to do the same thing. I know a large population of the Yazidis are going to Northern Europe, to the Scandinavian countries, and so they're saying that they're being well received. We have to see what Baghdad's going to do. I would hope that they would be humanitarian in their approach as well. With Christians, Yazidis and other religious minorities being driven from their homes, ambassador communities being shattered, talk to me about what all of this means for Iraq going forward. Well, it's a very devastating approach and outlook because if your communities are being pulled apart, and certainly from my own history, we know that when your community and your family is being pulled apart and forced to flee and go to places that they know not of, and people are dying in route, particularly the elder community who cannot make the long journey, then your future is really very, very bleak. So you need to look at it immediately. There needs to be protection by the Iraqi government for all minorities as well as the majorities. Everyone needs protection. And that's just the nature of humanity. All the countries signed on to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So they have to now start exercising that. Yeah, Ambassador Susan Johnson-Cook, a great point. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much.